Ah, good old checks and balances. The bedrock of American democracy. American governance is built on three distinct branches. The executive branch, led by the president, the legislative branch, the House and Senate, and the judicial branch, the judges and courts. Each branch has powers the others do not, and each branch has the ability to check the others and to hopefully stop any one branch from consolidating or abusing power. For example, it's up to the legislative branch to write the country's laws, but the president has the power to veto a law. The judiciary gets to be the ultimate arbitrator. The courts have the ability to find laws unconstitutional, and thus they act as checks on both the legislative and executive branches. But if the judiciary is a different branch than the executive, why is it so important to American presidential elections? That's a good question especially as the American people don't vote for federal judges. The answer, simply put, is that the winners of the elections get to nominate the most important judges in the country. And as the United States has gotten more and more politically polarized, the judges that get picked are increasingly partisan and polarizing themselves. In other words, the winners of elections are not necessarily picking the best judges in the land for federal courts, they're picking the judges most likely to adhere to a rigidly defined legal, political, and social outlook. Here's how it works. For major judicial appointments like the Supreme Court or other federal courts, the President of the United States nominates a candidate. That candidate can become a judge if they eventually get the support of a simple majority of U.S. Senators. If a candidate is confirmed as a federal judge, they hold that appointment for life. So yeah, it's kind of a big deal. So now you can start to see why elections are so important for America's judiciary branch. Let's take an example where an election delivers both a president and a Senate majority of the same party. This party can now easily nominate and confirm as many judicial openings as are available. The Republican Party enjoyed this opportunity under President Donald Trump, and they leveraged it to swing the Supreme Court dramatically to the right. It became not just a conservative Supreme Court, but an activist Supreme Court that upended decades of judicial precedent, caution, and compromise. As you might expect, this delighted Republicans and infuriated Democrats, and both sides have used the results to try to get people to vote for them in future elections. Both sides say, hey, you may not love our candidate for president, but if you don't vote, the other side will get to pick all the judges. And in fact, many people do vote not out of love for a specific candidate, but because they hope their views will ultimately be reflected in the judiciary branch. Now, maybe this impact helps get people to the polls to vote, but the current status quo is not necessarily beneficial for American democracy. For one thing, it deeply politicizes judicial appointments, and the judges that do end up getting appointed are increasingly ideological. It would be far better to have sober-minded judges making legally measured rulings. The status quo also raises the stakes of elections. In America's evenly divided society, a president may win a very, very close election, but then get to completely redefine the court's trajectory for decades. For this reason, the judiciary, which in theory is not even on the ballot, remains front and center as a critical issue and a critical prize in the 2024 American presidential election.